Ori in the Blind Forest has always been a game that intrigued me. I'm not someone who plays a lot of platformers or metroidvanias, yet the art style for this game has always captured my attention. Really, I wanted to play Ori in the Blind Forest to experience the game's visuals for myself. But what I found when I finally played the game was something incredible, and I can't wait to talk about it. Welcome to so I finally played Ori and the Blind Forest. I will be spoiling the game's story, so if you still want to play the game, I recommend stopping the video and playing it for yourself. You won't regret it. I think it's best we start from the beginning of the game, because a lot of the game's charm can be explained so well just from the opening minutes. The story begins on a stormy night as the spirit tree of the forest tells us a story of the night it lost Ori as a newborn, and how Ori became adopted by a creature named Naru who raised Ori as her own. Literally the first minute or so. But so much of what this game does so incredibly well can be seen from this intro. Ori in the Blind Forest is a truly heartfelt story supported in full by the game's visuals and soundtrack. The game doesn't use much dialogue to convey the emotions the devs want you to feel. Instead, they use colour and music to make us feel something. In the intro, we see Ori floating through this dark storm, acting as the forest's one light, before we see a second light shining on Naru. The soundtrack conveying a beauty to being set free and foreshadowing to us that Naru is a creature who will love Ori. These design choices are consistent throughout the game, and they work. Ori in the Blind Forest was a game that consistently made me feel something, and that isn't something that happens too often. I felt happiness watching Ori and Naru's connection and relationship. I also felt lost seeing Naru wither away and Ori trying to wake her up. The game knows when to just mute the colours, lower the soundtrack, and just make you feel something. Whilst I knew I was invested in the game from the beginning, I knew the game did something special with Kuro, the giant shadowy owl, who Pun! is consistently trying to stop Ori from restoring the forest. Kuro could have just been this big bad force trying to halt the player's progress, but instead she has a motive that you understand, again with little to no dialogue. When Ori was lost to the storm, the spirit tree released a flash of light to look for Ori, which ended up killing Kuro's just hatched babies, leaving one unhatched egg left, and Kuro determined not to let the tree become revitalized again. If you ask me, 100% understandable, and a scene again where you can feel Kuro's panic, feel the hatchling's fear, and feel Kuro's sadness when she sees her babies are gone. All these emotions and feelings are again presented through the game's use of colours and the intense soundtrack into almost nothing, letting us feel this moment. There is so much more to the story with characters like Gummo, a character that originally is a pest, but through Ori's kindness becomes a friend, and Gummo's story is also a sad one. But I think you get the point at this stage. The story, visuals, and soundtrack are incredible, and by far reason alone to play the game. So let's talk about the gameplay. Ori in the Blind Forest plays 
well, like a 2D Metroidvania. You explore, find pathways you can't go yet, gain new abilities, gradually explore more and more of the map, and the further along you get, the more the game throws at you. Now, as I said in the beginning, I don't play a lot of games in this genre, but all of this was an absolute blast. The game doesn't hold your hand. It gives you a vague direction and lets you find your way there, which usually means exploring your surroundings, finding secrets and stumbling across new abilities that allow us to progress. It all feels natural. Just because you hit a dead end doesn't mean you feel like you're lost. Just that you need to further explore, which is helped by the game's vast variety of locations. Yes, we are in a forest, but that doesn't mean the game is all green trees. We see snow, mountains, volcanoes, dark dungeons and water locations that flow seamlessly together. Now the game's combat is rather simple with just a couple of attacks, so it can be a bit of a button smasher at times. And actually, my one gripe with the game relates to it. Whilst this game is absolutely beautiful, like all the time, unfortunately some of the enemies' attacks and backgrounds can be the same colour, which leads to a bit of difficulty seeing what is safe and what isn't. But that'd be my only complaint, honestly. The platforming is incredible. It is by far the most satisfying aspect of the game as it contains a lot of puzzles and using your brain to find the best way to progress. Making sure you use all your abilities correctly, maybe leaving an enemy alive to make a jump easier, and these all come to a head when completing the game's element set pieces. When Ori restores an element to the forest, usually a colossal disaster will seemingly happen, and these are tough. You usually have to complete them in one go, which is about 40 seconds of gameplay, and it feels amazing to pull off, because these are tense moments. I don't really know what else to say about the gameplay. It's a lot of fun, and only adds to the spectacle of the game. I'll be honest, Ori in the Blind Forest now might be one of my favourite games ever. It is by far the most beautiful game I've ever played, and that doesn't just apply to the game's visuals. The story is one that will stick with me for a long time. The soundtrack feels like it has so much heart poured into it, and the gameplay is incredibly satisfying and fun to play. If, like myself, you hadn't played Ori in the Blind Forest, just do it. Seriously, I actually hate that it took me so long to play this game, but now, I'm just excited to continue this story in Will of the Wisps next month.